What's going on guys? I'm so excited today. I'm here in Paddock headquarters here in Singapore and I have the new watches that have just been launched and they are dazzling. The first one I want to talk about is the new Perpetual Calendar to 5236. It is the world's first single aperture inline perpetual calendar that displays the day the date and the month, right? So this watch was inspired by a pocket watch that dates in 1972. Uh, it's the reference 725-4. Um, as you guys know, Paddock's Museum is a constant source of inspiration. And Terry Stern, um, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with him, and one of the things he's really interested in is maximizing visibility and legibility in perpetual calendars. When he was designing the 5970, which was his first um, project on his own, he even told me he worked a little bit with like loop systems, which in the end he didn't use. But I think he must have looked at this watch and he thought it to himself, what an incredible intuitive way to read calendar information because it's all in one line. You read it and immediately you get it, right? So what's great about this is an aperture that has the day, the date, and the month all in one straight line, which is like so easy to read. Your eye doesn't have to search for information anywhere. It's absolutely stunning. So on the original pocket watch, which is 46 mm in diameter, you have three discs, right? You have um, a disc for each of the different uh, indications, but when they tried to use the same three disc configuration on a watch that was 41 mm, they realized that the date ended up being too small. So what they ended up doing was using a date that used two discs. So what you have is the day, then you have a disc surrounding that for the tenths of the date, then you have the units of the date, and then inside of that disc you have the month, which is uh, all new setup. It is coplanar, so all the discs are on the same plane. They're, it's using a double ball bearing system, so they cannot touch each other, and so they rotate incredibly smoothly. There's a three patent um, uh, arrangement for this, uh, for this new system, which comprises of 118 parts. Uh, what else do I love about this watch? Uh, well, I have to say, it's a wonderful tribute to some of the most iconic models in Patek's uh, history and perpetual calendars. To me, I see a strong influence of the iconic 3448, which was the world's first perpetual calendar that was automatic, which was launched in 1962. So if you look at this watch, okay, that was a 37.5 mm watch, this is a 41 mm watch, but what you see is this beautiful sort of bezel case and this sort of smooth UFO shape like uh, um, uh, case uh, with these really short angular lugs, which is really distinct and really reminds me of the 3448. What's different is the 3448 had a recessed crown, whereas this has got a much more pragmatic um, crown. Uh, of course, you have a larger diameter watch with a very beautiful blue graded dial, and then you've got a sub dial here that has a moon face indication. In the 3448, you, of course, you have the, the date ring around the, the moon face indication, but here, instead of that, because you don't need it, because the date is smack in the middle of your single aperture, you have the seconds display, which is reminiscent to me of the 1526, the very first perpetual calendar ever made in the world and serially produced, of course, by Patrick Philippe back in 1941. So that is this beautiful watch. Oh, the last thing that I should tell you about is that this is the second only watch to ever feature a platinum micro rotor. The one watch that they had had this before was the 5208, unique piece for only watch, which had a platinum rotor that had a carbon pattern on it. And this one uh, has a, yeah, a platinum micro rotor. Look at it here. The other thing too, if you guys like a Patek Philippe uh, like history, the 3448, um, actually only had two platinum examples ever made. Uh, it they were actually initially white gold watches, but at the, but uh, Philip Stern gave permission for those watches to be recased in platinum cases, and I think Jean-Claude Beaver had one at one point. I think he must have sold it for some astronomical amount of money. So I love the fact that this is actually made in platinum and has a platinum rotor, so super dope, very cool. So guys, the next watch I want to talk about is this very beautiful Calatrava 6119. And this is, an, to me, an amazing example of Patek Philippe doing simple watches with incredible beauty. So before I look at the dial side of the watch, the first thing I want to look at is the movement side of the watch. And here you'll see caliber 30-2. 5.5, which represents 30 mm in diameter and 2.5 mm in height. The first thing you're going to see here is that you, you'll notice that there's two barrels. And actually, the initial version of this movement only had one barrel. Uh, according to Philip Barat, they had so much space, they decided to put a second barrel in there, which was not necessary to uh, achieve the 65 hours of power reserve. So instead of having the barrels run in sequence, they have them run in parallel so that you can maximize the amount of torque over the power reserve. So the stat I think we were given was something, uh, the moment of inertia of the balance went up from 5.5 uh, milligrams over centimeters square to over two uh, milligrams over centimeters square, if I'm not mistaken, right? Which is, it, it's, he called it a tractor. But the point is, whether it's a tractor or not, it is beautiful. Look at that like movement architecture, it's absolutely stunning. Now I'm gonna switch over to the dial side. 
And I have to say this watch is absolutely ravishing, right? Uh, I think the very first moment they used a clue de Perry or a hobnail uh, guilloche on a bezel for Calatrava was back in 1934, if I'm not mistaken, with the 96D, D standing for decoratif in French, meaning decorative, right? So they've used that bezel here, but they've done it on a 39mm watch, and they've done this sort of extraordinary combination of these pointed baton markers uh, combined with applied dots in the chemin de fer with sword hands. And I'm not joking, guys. This is like possibly the most beautiful simple watch I've seen ever. Um, it comes in two versions, a rose gold version with a uh, kind of cream silver dial with a, a grainy finish. And then I actually really like the white girl version with the slate gray dial and the vertical brushing, which I think is extraordinary. Okay, so now I want to talk about 1996. This is the year in which Philip Stern created the annual calendar of complication. What's an annual calendar? It's pretty much the same as a perpetual calendar, except on the 1st of March, you just adjust it manually. Um, so this is in fact the 25th anniversary of the birth of the annual calendar complication, but in Paddock they don't celebrate 25 anniversaries, they celebrate like 150 or 175. So this is not considered to be a 25th anniversary watch, but it's the first time the annual calendar comes in steel in this amazing reference 4947 and 38 mm with a beautiful midnight blue dial with a silk shantung finish on it, which I find to be absolutely ravishing. Um, it's also for the first time on a steel bracelet as well, and this five-link steel bracelet is so supple on the wrist. I put this on and I had a hard time taking it off, and I think this is gonna be one of the crazy unicorns for collectability in the future. So guys, that's part one of our paddocks. Now we're gonna talk about the novices. The thing that I love the best is that within one week, paddock broke the internet twice, right? So with the launch of the 5236, uh, the beautiful Calatrava and the steel annual calendar, but basically caused the internet to explode with the creation or the unveiling of the end of series 5711 watches, um, the 5711 of course being the Nautilus, in this beautiful olive green dial. So I have that version of this watch here, and I'm also wearing my 3701A. And one of the things I want to show you is in this light, the color is extremely supple. And when you go into like any sort of strong natural light, you're gonna see the green, you're gonna see how luminous it is, you're gonna see that beautiful sun ray effect. But in this room, like, you kind of don't really pick it up that immediately, which I think is actually really cool because if you're wearing one of these pieces, one of these incredibly rare and extremely desirable end of series pieces and you're just kind of chilling out with people, people may not initially notice. But of course, if you go anywhere where there's sun, it's gonna be kind of screaming on your wrist that you've got basically a unicorn, right? So there was two versions of that watch. This is a, a normal bezel version. And this is a fully steel watch with baguette diamonds. And the baguette diamonds are actually trape trapezoidal uh, in order to follow the octagon of the bezel. The steel watch with baguette diamonds is just absolutely insane. Actually, they both are, but they're absolutely stunning watches and a wonderful tribute to an icon that is the 5711. All right, the other watch that was launched as well was the 5990, which is this rose gold blue sunray dial uh, Nautilus with two functions. One is the travel time function, which gives you time in your local time and your home time as well. Uh, and even better, it gives you a indication for day and night in both local and home time too. And then of course, it's got Paddock's automatic vertical clutch flyback chronograph, uh, which is one of the most, and which incidentally has a silicone escapement. It was the first automatic paddock that had a silicone escapement, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and there you go, that's that watch right here, which is another absolutely killer piece to celebrate the, well, I, I don't want to say the end of the Nautilus because I can only imagine something else will happen as well. And we're all waiting with bated breath. But in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, these Nautiluses are amazing. The annual calendar is just ravishing the Calatrava. It's so beautiful, it's making me cry. And the, the 5236 is the watch that I'm very tempted to put into my pocket and try to run out of paddock with right now, but I'm not going to because this is Singapore and we obey the laws. Thank you very much, and goodbye.